Today is Thursday, August the 13th, and we're going to be listening today to a, another repetition of a truth that's repeated again and again in Proverbs, either exactly with these words or in another from another vantage point, but it's the same basic truth, and it's one that you and I should always have at the forefront of our mind. And I want to explain it today in terms of the way a New Testament believer approaches God as opposed to the way maybe an Old Testament believer may have. Uh, Should there be a difference, or should it be the same? Proverbs 9, verse 10 and 12. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and years of life will be added to you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The question for many of us today is, what does it mean to fear the Lord? As new believers, we are taught to, uh, New Testament believers, we are taught to come before the throne of grace with boldness, that we can receive grace to help in time of need. And the boldness before the throne does not mean arrogance or presumptiveness or entitlement, but it means with faith knowing that we belong there because we have been redeemed, we have been saved, we've been regenerated, we've been adopted into the family of God, and someday we will be joint heirs. Well, we're joint heirs right now with Christ, but we will be experiencing that as co-regents with Christ. So we can come to the throne of grace because we belong there because of the goodness and grace of God. It doesn't mean to come bold in your pride or to come bold in your ego, thinking you can demand anything of God. That for some reason, if you put the right words together in the right formula and get the right people to agree with you, that God will do what you say as if he's some magical genie that if you rub the the lamp the right way, he will manifest and give you what you want. It's the fear of the Lord, respect, awe, reverence, and abject fear. And that's our appreciation for his power. Years ago, when I first went to Niagara Falls, I had heard about it for years, and and, um, I couldn't wait to see it. And when I saw it up close, it was a profound visual uh, sensory overload experience. You could feel the power and the energy of it, and you could, and you felt small. But one thing that caught me off guard was there was a place, I'm not sure if you can even still do it, but back then you could walk right up to the edge of the river, not too far away from the falls. You could park there and walk out and stand there. Now, there was a rail there, but you were real close to the water. And that water is rushing by so rapidly and with such force that it pulls you forward. And I was told later that many people had uh, testified or uh, confessed that they were compelled to get into the water because its draw was so powerful. So you have to fear Niagara Falls as well as you revere it and honor it because of its power. Part of fearing God is knowing who he is and who you're not. And that whatever you think you have that's going to manipulate God is purely a fantasy in your mind. You and I should come with humility. We should come with a, a broken heart and a, and a contrite heart, as well as a heart full of worship and awe for how great he is, and that his grace has been given to us, and because of his greatness and his grace, we can come boldly to the throne. So this fear is the beginning of real wisdom, which leads us to knowledge of the Holy One. And when you know the Holy One, the Lord God through his son Jesus Christ and his spirit living within you and the word of God, then you gain true understanding. And then that will add length to your days, which is an amazing promise. By walking with God, he prolongs our lives. Let's pray. Father, once again, thank you for your word. We thank you that you can be known, you want to be known, you've revealed yourself to us, and if we fear you, we will know you. And then by knowing you, we'll gain true understanding and great wisdom. Father, I pray for everyone who's taking part in the devotion this morning, that you'll help us uh, know you, seek you, spend time with you, and begin to learn your heart that we might reflect you to others. For we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for spending your Thursday morning with me or noontime or evening, whatever it is. And we'll see you again tomorrow.